Item number, SCP-547. Object class, safe. Special containment procedures. SCP-547 is to be stored inside a plain black envelope, which in turn is to be stored in the security deposit box, located in Dr. R***'s office. No Foundation employees to access SCP-547 without Dr. R***'s consent, and SCP-547 itself should only be handled by test subjects. Please note that any persons exposed to SCP-547's effects are subject to Class D status. Description SCP-547 is an off-white standard size business card, 85mm by 55mm, for a licensed hypnotherapist from the UK. The front of the card is unremarkable and inert. On the reverse, the phrase Je pense donc is written in black ballpoint pen. The modified side of SCP-547 is a cognito hazard and should be treated with the relevant precautions. In all cases, reading and understanding the phrase has ultimately resulted in a complete loss of personality and a greatly reduced awareness of self. Test subjects have been able to perform most basic tasks, and nearly all are still capable of speech. Subjects are, however, incapable of any subjective thought and emotion beyond the rational and immediate. The effects of SCP-547 are degenerative, with full manifestation occurring approximately 10 weeks after exposure. Several stages have been observed. Exposure. One week. No substantial change in personality. Subjects may occasionally forget personal details or answer to a name other than their own. One to six weeks. Subjects begin to show confusion as to their own identity and key facts regarding their lives. See interview SCP-547-A for further details. Six to nine weeks. Subjects begin to regress towards final stage of infection. Mannerisms and turns of phrase associated with subject begin to disappear and speech begins to lack inflection and emotion. Ten weeks and beyond. Psychological and cognitive effects previously described are fully manifest. See Interview SCP-547-B for further details. Interview SCP-547-A Subject D-547 Tau is a Caucasian male, aged 35. Time since exposure to SCP-547 Five weeks, two days. Doctor. Good morning, Subject Tao. I'm Doctor. Records say your name is. Is that correct? D547 Tao. It is. Doctor. Very good. Tell me a little bit about yourself. D. Where should I start? Doctor. Well, how about a little regarding your early life? Any happy memories? D. Oh yes. Every summer, my parents used to rent this place in Maine. I loved it there. Sandy beaches, those quaint little lighthouses, lobster dinners. I remember my mom telling me, Henry, if the- Doctor. Hang on, can I stop you there? Why did your mother refer to you as Henry? D. Because that's my name. Doctor. You confirmed your name as 30 seconds ago. D. I did? I... Doctor, please, continue. D. Like I was saying, my mom always said, Marcus, if there was ever a paradise here on Earth, this would be it. Man, I loved that clean air. All that green. Nothing like BC in the spring. Doctor, British Columbia? D. Only BC I know of. Doctor, tell me about your parents. D. Decent people. Both came from Kentucky. Born and raised. My dad loved his bikes. Named me after one. Got some ribbing at school for that. Harley ain't all that common a name, you know. He was a good man, though. Loved his pa. Says leaving him at the boarding gate back in was the saddest day of his life. But a man's gotta make his own way in the world, I guess. Doctor. So he emigrated from D. Yes. Doctor. But he was born in Kentucky. D. That's right. Doctor. 
Would you mind confirming your name and the last place you lived, please? D. Jacob Maddox, Austin, Texas. Doctor. And again? D. Paul Jones. I'm from Cardiff. It's in the UK and... Doctor. Again. D. David Pollock, Birdseye, Utah. I don't understand why you're asking. I've already told you. Doctor. Again. Remainder of interview classified. O5 clearance required. Interview. SCP 547B. Fourth interview with SCP 547 Tau. Twelve weeks since exposure. Doctor. Good morning, Tau. DSCP 547 Tau. Good morning. Doctor. I'd like you to perform some tests today. Please follow the written directions on the sheet in front of you. You have 15 minutes. Subject Tau performs several tests designed to highlight any loss in cognitive function. Results are negative. Doctor. Good. Now I'm going to show you a few pictures. Can you tell me what this is? D. Blue sky with clouds. Doctor. What do you think of it? D. I think... I think... I don't know. Doctor. How about this one? D. It's a man. He's dead. His throat's been cut. Doctor. Any thoughts on this? You used to hate this picture. D. It's an image of a dead human printed on photograph quality paper. High gloss. Doctor. Not quite what I was getting at. You have no opinion of it whatsoever. D. No. Doctor. Moving on then. According to your profile, you suffered from arachnophobia. Doctor releases a large but otherwise unremarkable house spider onto Subject Tao's arm. Heart rate does not rise above 65 BPM. Doctor. Nothing? It's been three weeks since I've been able to elicit any sort of human response from you. Let's try something else. Do you know what this is? D. A blowtorch. Doctor activates blowtorch and moves it towards Tao's arm, causing subject to flinch. Tao's heart rate jumps to 135 BPM. Doctor. Hmm. Remainder of interview classified. O5 clearance required. From Dr. To O5 Subject SCP-547 In response to your previous email, subjects are unable to recall any previous experiences in an emotional context and are completely incapable of subjective thought. I would like to suggest that due to their predictable behavior, Subjects exposed to SCP-547 would make perfect control groups for any other psychohazards or cognitohazards we may encounter. Regards. From O5 to Dr. Subject. Regarding SCP-547, I would like subjects D-547 Alpha through Gamma prepped for transport by O700 tomorrow. You can expect more requests of this nature in the future. Item Number SCP-551 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-551 is to be contained in a simple cardboard box. It must be of an adequate size to carry all pieces of SCP-551. The box should be stored in a locker unit on Storage Site-23 and at least one Level 1 staff member is to be notified in the event of its removal. Description SCP-551 is a standard 550-piece jigsaw puzzle, which should depict, in its finished form, the image of a solitary woman on a small rowboat, surrounded by a stormy sea. However, due to the nature of SCP-551's anomalous qualities, some details of the scene are left incomplete such as the woman's face, and data expunged. SCP-551 was found in the apartment of after other residents complained of an odor seeping out from under the door. The severely malnourished body of was discovered beside SCP-551 
with several pieces still clutched in her hand. Roughly one-third of SCP-551 was pieced together on her floor. Multiple subjects testing SCP-551 stated that a completion of the puzzle seems inconceivable. The mental reactions of subjects to SCP-551 was diverse, apparently depending less on the puzzle and more on the personality of the subject, though the effects of SCP-551 on the psychology of subjects should not be overlooked. Addendum 551-1 Standard Class D personnel is tasked with piecing together SCP-551. Subjects spent two weeks in a single room, trying to finish the puzzle and pausing only to sleep. Subject became increasingly frustrated with his progress on SCP-551, which failed to span past 40 connected pieces after this time. Subject slept less during his last days working on the puzzle, and was permitted to stop when he data expunged. Addendum 551-2 Class D personnel with a history of addictive behavior is tasked with piecing together SCP-551. Subject acted aloof about the assignment at first, but after connecting two pieces, she seemed to become alarmingly obsessed with SCP-551. Subject stayed beside it for days, sometimes screaming about her lack of progress. After a period of four weeks, Subject lost consciousness from lack of sleep, and the test was ended. 102 pieces of SCP-551 had been connected. Addendum 551-3 Dr. who scored above average on a standard IQ test, expressed skepticism about SCP-551 and was approved to test it. Said doctor completed all but a couple of sections, specifically the woman's facial features and data expunged. Despite this success, Dr. showed confusion over his remaining pieces and adopted a fatalist attitude toward the puzzle, finally refusing to complete it after four days. Addendum 551-4 a computer-based approach was taken on the completion of the puzzle. The first tool used was a mechanical arm designed to take a piece and place it in the puzzle, used along with a camera and a desktop computer running an image processing algorithm. The application was tested extensively with normal puzzles. However, when tasked with completion of the puzzle, it would invariably trigger a blue screen, or a kernel panic, as soon as it finished scanning the piece. An embedded design approach was taken and the computer was replaced by a microcontroller in charge of moving the piece linked to an image processing DSP. However, the value of the program counter register and all the CPUs would corrupt as soon as the DSP finished scanning the picture of the piece, and in several occasions, a sudden, unexpected current peak would result in damage to the CPUs and other components. Automated solutions, therefore, had to be discarded. Item Number SCP-571 Object Class Keter Special Containment Procedures A single piece of paper containing an instance of SCP-571 should be kept inside an opaque sealed container of any kind, at the center of any high-security containment room, currently the primary containment chamber at Compound 1043, Site 143. This containment room must be equipped with incineration devices, which shall be maintained and tested regularly. Any site housing SCP-571 must not be located within 200 kilometers of any minor population center, or within 500 kilometers of any major population center. No devices that have any capability of transmitting pictures are to be allowed within the perimeter of the compound housing SCP-571. Only one instance of SCP-571 should exist at any time, except during specially approved testing. Should the paper containing SCP-571 be destroyed, another copy may be printed from the encrypted backup file. No other recordings of SCP-571 are to exist. SCP-571's containment chamber is to be monitored using infrared devices. Eight Level 2 guards must be stationed outside of SCP-571's containment chamber at all times. Four of these guards are to wear infrared goggles during shifts. Any persons attempting to enter the containment chamber without authorization are to be terminated immediately. Upon any successful unauthorized entry, 
The incineration devices in SCP-571's containment chamber are to be activated immediately. All personnel leaving Site-143 are to be examined for potential SCP-571 contamination without visual contact, as outlined by Protocol 571-Alpha. Personnel attempting to bypass Site-143 security are to be terminated within Compound 1043's 10-mile 10 perimeter. In the case of an SCP-571 containment breach, affected personnel are to be summarily killed and incinerated. If Compound 1043 becomes significantly compromised, the network of auxiliary incineration devices should be activated, as outlined by Protocol 571-Alpha. Mobile Task Force Eta-10 see no evil, are assigned to handling potential instances of SCP-571 and SCP-571-related memes appearing independently outside containment. Description SCP-571 is a complex pattern of lines and scribbles with an anomalous mimetic effect. Appearance was determined by cutting an image of 571 into sections and rearranging the sections disabling the pattern's anomalous effect and allowing it to be safely viewed. SCP-571's anomalous effect has changed since its initial containment by the Foundation. The mechanism, if any, that has caused the changes in this effect, or its initial creation, is unclear. See documentation attached. Current SCP-571 anomalous effect follows. When any human looks at SCP-571 for any amount of time, they will immediately search for a piece of paper or other suitable stationery. The exposed human will then begin to copy SCP-571 onto the new paper with any available drawing implement. Despite the particularly high complexity of the pattern, copying of SCP-571 by an exposed human will be successful approximately 96% of the time. Once SCP-571 has been copied, whether successfully or not, the affected person will seek out other humans and attempt to coax or force them to view the copied pattern. Successfully infected victims will immediately attempt to copy the pattern, thus continuing the process. Attempts to reason with infected persons are met with failure. Carriers of SCP-571 will typically only talk or interact with others for the eventual purpose of causing them to look at SCP-571. Initially, SCP-571 carriers retain their original personality and behavior, with the added compulsion aspect, similar to a heightened obsessive-compulsive disorder. In this stage, carriers can often be communicated with as normal, but are unable to prevent themselves from acting out the SCP-571 compulsion. If an individual SCP-571 carrier does not successfully infect a new, previously uninfected carrier within exponential psychological deterioration will occur in the carrier. The type and rate of deterioration varies from carrier to carrier, but ends with near-total lack of activity in the cerebrum. Onset of deterioration can be delayed further, or temporarily halted once begun, by infecting multiple new carriers within a short period of time. Individual SCP-571 carriers are aware of this circumstance and may use this fact as a way to coax others to view the SCP-571 pattern. Carriers of SCP-571 who are unable to locate other uninfected humans for days will begin to regularly coax other carriers to view and copy the pattern again. In the final stage of psychological deterioration, 30% of carriers will, if not prompted otherwise, continue this cycle until undergoing death by thirst. The remainder of exposed individuals will eat and drink as necessary, but will often neglect other non-vital bodily needs, such as using restrooms or voluntarily sleeping. Exposure to Class C amnestics may cause SCP-571 carriers to lose their ability to perfectly duplicate the SCP-571 pattern. However, carriers will continue to attempt to recreate the pattern and attempt to coax other individuals to view it. These depictions are never accurate depictions of SCP-571, even in individuals with photographic memory, as the pattern is too complex to be copied by non-anomalous means and cannot be transmitted. There is no known means of completely curing individuals affected by SCP-571. 
As carriers of SCP-571 are permanently unable to engage in any conscious activity unrelated to enticing another person to view SCP-571, containment breach may result in an AK-class end-of-the-world scenario. If SCP-571 carriers are able to reach major urban population centers. Addendum Incident X-571-A Data expunged Because of the heightened likelihood that further instances may come into existence outside of containment, SCP-571 has been reclassified as Keter. Description and containment procedures updated accordingly. Additionally, it appears that in the event of an SCP-571 critical mass carrier population, defined as a population above within close proximity to one another, the psychological deterioration effect can be staved off indefinitely. However, the compulsion aspect remains permanent. Item Number SCP-573 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures Object is to be locked in one of Site-62's secure lockers. SCP-573 requires the agreement of two members of senior staff in order to be removed from containment. No one is allowed to make use of SCP-573 without at least two backup researchers. Testing of SCP-573 around children is hereby denied without O5 approval. Description SCP-573 is a flute made from bone. DNA and carbon testing reveal the material to be human, female, and approximately a thousand years old. The bone is a femur and, from the size, comes from a child between the ages of 7 and 12. SCP-573 was discovered in Louisiana by agents investigating the disappearance of local children. Agents arriving on the scene were attacked by a pack of wild animals, several different species working together. Once the animals were put down, the agents were then attacked by several of the missing children, being urged on by one Daryl King, the then owner of SCP-573. Agent shot Mr. King, ending his hold over the children and preventing a major incident. Testing of SCP-573 has revealed that, when played, it places animals and prepubescent children into a highly receptive state. All creatures so affected are eager and willing to do whatever the player requests, including things that are beyond them when in a non-trance state. Once the instrument is played, subjects remain in the trance state for five times the period the flute was played for, e.g., play the flute for a minute, the trance remains for five minutes. Knowledge of how to play a flute is not needed to effectively use SCP-573. Anyone attempting to use SCP-573 will find themselves able to play the flute as if they had been playing for years and can play any song they desire. Addendum As of SCP-573 is not to be used on human subjects. As revealed in Diary 573, SCP-573 provokes feelings of revulsion and paranoia in the user, specifically oriented towards prepubescence. These feelings increase gradually but steadily until the wielder finds himself acting out violently and maliciously towards any prepubescent under his influence. Human testing with SCP-573 is thus suspended indefinitely. 056 Item Number SCP-576 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-576 is to be kept in a digital combination locker at Site-19. The passcode to this locker is to be rotated twice each month. Level 3 authorization is required prior to any testing involving SCP-576. Under no circumstances is access to SCP-576 to be granted outside of testing protocol. Description SCP-576 is a rounded glass bottle with a cork stopper, measuring approximately 6 centimeters in diameter at base and 8 centimeters in height. SCP-576 is etched with a simple design, two crisscrossed stems with leaves and flowers, and possesses no maker's marks. SCP-576 is filled with a clear liquid, designated SCP-576-1. 
Lab analysis has revealed the chemical composition of SCP-5761 to be identical to that of a 0.0100M fructose and water solution. It is theorized that SCP-5761 only retains its effects while within SCP-576, as samples consumed from a vessel other than SCP-576 result in no anomalous effects. It has been observed that SCP-576 appears to be capable of refilling itself, albeit slowly. The replenishing rate is estimated at approximately 2 milliliters per week. The process by which SCP-576 refills itself is unknown. Consumption of SCP-576-1 results in no immediate effects. However, when an individual sleeps after consuming SCP-576-1, they will experience vivid dreams. Dreams caused by SCP-576-1 are reported to be based on memories significant to the individual. Individuals used in SCP-576 testing report a correlation between the quantity of the fluid consumed and the relative realism of the resulting dreams. When an individual enters an SCP-576-1 affected sleep, they will pass through the natural stages of sleep stages 1, 2, 3, and 4, and remain in a peaceful, constant state of REM sleep for a period lasting from 8 to 20 hours. Attempts to awaken individuals in this state, before they awaken on their own, have proven unsuccessful. The undisturbed sleep caused by SCP-5761 is consistent between all subjects, regardless of any pre-existing or history of sleep disorders. Addendum SCP-5761 SCP-576 was originally recovered from the mansion of a Mr. who was discovered dead by his household's maid. Hospital records indicate that Mr. had been suffering from stress and malnutrition, which were attributed to overwork and financial strain, prior to his death. SCP-576 was found on Mr. bedside table, next to a photo album which was determined to possess no anomalous properties. SCP-576 was noted to be a little less than one quarter full at the time of discovery. Addendum SCP-576-2 Based on testing, a tentative correlation between dosage and length of time spent asleep has been established. Individual cases that are exceptions are currently being investigated. Excerpt from Testing Log SCP-576-5193 Subject D-6312 30-year-old male Dosage 1 sip Approximately 5.1 milliliters Length of sleep 8 hours Subject comments I remembered all the stuff I did when I was little. I got to relive making and flying paper airplanes building a treehouse all by myself, taking naps in the meadows behind my house. I'd forgotten all those things I used to have the time to do. Subject D-5683, 25-year-old female. Dosage Two sips, approximately 12.3 milliliters. Length of sleep 13 hours. Subject comments I dreamed of my dog before I started my second job. I dreamed of when we would spend time together walking through the park, just walking. Sometimes I'd just sit and watch her chase birds, and never notice the time passing. I remember that on bad days. We would play catch, and I'd feel better. I miss her. Subject D-3473 40-year-old male Dosage One sip Approximately 4.9 milliliters Length of sleep 20 hours Subject comments, she was still smiling, we were still laughing, it was that rainy day when I brought her flowers, we were still together, she was still alive. Subject, D-3473, 40-year-old male, second trial, dosage, two sips, approximately 11.5 milliliters, length of sleep, 27 hours. Subject comments. I saw the day we first met. I lived through the first time she smiled at me. I lived through everything again. It was wonderful. Subject. D-3473, 
40 year old male, third trial. Dosage, one sip, approximately six milliliters. Length of sleep, 36 hours. Subject comments, I remembered so many things. The day I lent her my jacket, the day we went to that outdoor concert. I don't want to let any of that go, any of the time we spent together. I want to keep remembering. I want to go back. I want to stay there. End log. Addendum SCP-5763 As of two documents have been recovered from the records of Mr. Investigation of the documents is currently underway. Excerpt from document 576J5 Believed to be the diary of the late Mr. Date expunged. I took another small dose. It couldn't hurt. With everything that's happened lately, I can't fall asleep otherwise. I'll take care of everything important later, when I'm better rested. So many numbers and dates that need to be set in order. It's just too much. Too much. Date expunged. It's not just one specific time that I wish I could return to. It's not just one thing. It's everything. It's all those scattered memories and little wonders that I want to experience again. When I dream, I remember in perfect clarity the days I could take the time to feel the sun on my face. The days I didn't have to worry about much more than being back home in time for dinner. Date expunged. Things could be worse, but they could still be better. Much better. These are the thoughts that keep me awake at night. More than anything, I'm scared. Scared of what'll be in the future, and scared of what won't be. I know one thing. I don't regret all these memories. I don't regret returning to them. These were the best times of my life. I couldn't possibly give them up. Date expunged. I found those photographs from so long ago. The day I found the bird's nest in the woods. The day I saw snow for the first time. The day I skipped school to explore the lake and found the miniature waterfall. Date expunged. I can't face it at all now. When I sleep, nothing can hurt me. I'm safe when I remember the better times, the happier times. When I dream, I remember everything. Nothing can take that away from me. Date expunged. Everything can just wait until I wake up again. Document 576-J6, found within Document 576-J5. Item number... Batch... Take some time to clear your mind. Bring back what's been left behind. One sip and your woes are freed. One good night's sleep, guaranteed. Thank you for your patronage. Sweet dreams. Marshall Carter and Dark, LTD. Item number, SCP-581, Object Class, Safe. Special Containment Procedures, except for approved testing, SCP-581 must be kept a minimum of 1,000 meters from all members of all equine species. SCP-581 is to be kept in locked, climate-controlled facilities. No firearms are allowed in proximity to any examples of SCP-581-2. Description SCP-581 is a horse's nose bag made from leather. Any equine subjects, horses, mules, and donkeys have all been confirmed to be susceptible. Zebras, onagers, and other non-domesticated hybrids have not been tested due to budgetary reasons. Within 500 meters is potentially an instance of SCP-581-1. SCP-581-1's sole motivation appears to be inserting its muzzle within SCP-581. This is strong enough to override instinctual reactions to predator urine, or females in heat, and has caused instances of SCP-581-1 to harm themselves in the process of attempting to free SCP-581 from within steel safes. Only one instance of SCP-581-1 is known to exist at any time. Examples of SCP-581-1 will actively resist being removed from SCP-581's range of effect, and will sicken and 90% die within a week of SCP-581 being forcibly removed. If SCP-581-1 succeeds in inserting its muzzle within SCP-581, 
It will become an example of SCP-581-2. SCP-581-2 is an equine characterized by several anomalous behaviors. These behaviors seem to indicate that SCP-581-2 believes itself to be a human. Observed anomalous human-like behaviors include attempts to walk on its hind legs, attempts to attack its head with its front hooves, attempts to enter the driver's seat of unoccupied vehicles, fascination by and then hostility towards reflective surfaces, attempts to clasp firearms with its front hooves, extended periods of aberrant modulated vocalizations. These are believed to be SCP-581-2's attempts to speak. Data expunged. To date, all specimens of SCP-581-2 have been euthanized due to multiple limb fractures. No specimen has survived longer than two hours. Item Number SCP-596 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-596 is to be secured in a standard containment chamber, guarded according to usual protocols. Care must be taken not to allow direct physical contact with SCP-596. Only designated Class D subjects should do so. Subjects should be medically screened before a new subject is applied to SCP-596. O5 oversight may permit special exception when a healthy alternative for a unique and critically required subject cannot be found. All biological material derived from SCP-596 should be handled according to Foundation safety guidelines. As sedatives have been found to impede the productivity of SCP-596, subjects must remain conscious when applied to SCP-596. Naturally, Restraints will be required in order to facilitate the application of a new subject. It is recommended that new subjects be restrained to the operating table, with one arm extended outward from the body. This position most easily allows access to quickly decapitate the subject after application is made. The lobotomizer can then be applied to the brain stem, once regrowth reaches that point, to prevent further cognitive function. The Foundation Ethics Committee has determined that this practice best ensures a pleasant working environment for assigned personnel. After the new subject has been applied to SCP-596, the old subject may be disposed of, blood and other fluid harvesting material may be connected to the new subject, and organ extraction can begin. Description SCP-596 is a 63-centimeter-high bronze snake statue believed to be a representation of SCP-596 was recovered from a hospital in in the hands of suspected by local authorities of being a tomb robber. While the implications are clear, the original location of SCP-596 is still unknown. When a person makes physical contact with SCP-596, they are unable to release contact or move the statue themselves. The only way to completely remove a subject is for another person to make physical contact with SCP-596, at which point the original subject will expire. When in contact with SCP-596, any wounds or injuries will heal at incredible speed. Subject always displays extreme discomfort, although the nature of this discomfort is unknown. The regenerative effect of the statue is such that if the subject is surgically removed from SCP-596, the subject will expire and a new body will grow from the parts still attached to SCP-596. Addendum Experimental Log 0217 SCP-596 brought in with sedated subject attached, placed in containment chamber under observation. Subject appeared restless and pained, with agitation growing as the sedative wore off. Once conscious, subject began to scream incoherently and writhe in what appears to be great distress. Despite this, subject was unable to move SCP-596. Behavior is consistent with considerable pain, but there is no indication as to whether this is physical or psychic in nature. 0218 still unresponsive to questioning or other stimuli. 
Subject was led quite easily when gloved personnel moved SCP-596. Subject unable to take food or water, so IV may be required. We'll observe the effects of starvation first, however. 0310. Three weeks after arrival, and shows no effects of starvation or dehydration. Subject has maintained motion and constant screaming without sleep for the entire period. The means by which SCP-596 sustains the subject may be of use, provided the other side effects can be eliminated. Otherwise, suggest that SCP-596 be scheduled for destruction. 0313 ceased screaming at 12.04 today. Subject was sedated and examined. Examination showed the subject's vocal cords completely shredded. Fifteen minutes after sedation wore off, subject began screaming again. Further examination showed the vocal cords completely healed. This healing effect gives new promise to SCP-596. 0314 Tested limits of SCP-596 healing effect. Sedated subject and severed left toe. No regeneration displayed until subject regained consciousness, whereupon the toe regenerated in 26 minutes. Severed right foot, without sedation. Regeneration began immediately and concluded in 83 minutes. Severed both legs, regenerated simultaneously in 297 minutes. It appears that the regeneration in one area is not slowed by injuries in other locations. 0315 Severed arms was using to hold SCP below the elbow. Subject's body immediately died. Autopsy showed no identifiable cause of death. Regeneration of attached forearms began. 0316 Subject began writhing as motor and nervous systems developed. Screaming began again at 7.36, as soon as respiratory system was capable. Full regeneration complete at 21.05. 03.17 Subject sedated and restrained. Hypodermic inserted into median cubital vein. Several pints of blood drawn before drop in blood pressure prevented further collection. Upon regaining consciousness, blood pressure improved, and the drawing of blood could resume. 0318 Subject produced 72 pints of blood in the last 24 hours. Clearly, the regenerative power of SCP-596 also accelerates blood production. Request Class D subject with type O negative blood. 0319 Restrained Class D applied to SCP-596. Immediately releases SCP-596 and expires. With multiple draw points, Class D subjects should be able to provide the Foundation with a constant supply of universal O-negative blood for transfusions and experimentation. Recommend Class D of blood type AB be kept on hand if universal blood plasma is required. 0412 While blood production continues, there are difficulties in instituting the organ removal program. Even while restrained, Surgical procedures are difficult, while the subject continues writhing. Severing the hands allows the collection of a complete body of organs at once, but interrupts the blood production. Decapitation seems to be the best solution, but unpredictable regeneration of the brainstem continues to cause difficulties. Date 0413 From Dr. John Drake To Foundation Technical Development Request Subject SCP-596 Automatic Brainstem Removal Morning, chaps. Any chance you technical boffins could throw something together to chop off a head and stop it growing back? We've been doing it manually so far, and it's becoming quite tedious. Not to mention making everyone jump if the process is forgotten and the poor bugger starts screaming again. Please see the attached documentation which has been censored appropriate for level 1 and above. Regards, Dr. John Drake. Date, 0413. From, Foundation Technical Development. To, Dr. John Drake. Subject, regarding, SCP-596. 
Automatic Brainstem Removal. Your request has been received and approved. A technician will contact you shortly. Date 0421. From Mike Smith, FTD, to Dr. John Drake. Subject Regarding SCP 596, Automatic Brainstem Removal. Dr. Drake, your completed request has been dispatched. Please see attached specifications. Although the device cannot perform the initial decapitation, consultation with medical personnel assigned to SCP-596 determined that a smaller device that could remain within a regenerated skull would be more useful. Please complete the performance review for the developed equipment within 30 days. Mike Smith Date 0426 From Dr. John Drake To Mike Smith FTD Subject Regarding the email regarding SCP-596 Automatic Brainstem Removal Hi Mike Glowing review for the new device The staff have taken to calling it the Lobotomizer Although that's obviously technically inaccurate I thought the suction system to remove the pureed brain matter was quite ingenious. As your specifications noted, by allowing the regeneration of the head, we can now extract eyes and tooth buds from the subject. Keep up the good work. Dr. John Drake Item Number SCP-597 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-597 is to be guarded and researched by a rotating monthly shift. Those in charge of the design of the containment procedures are not allowed contact with the SCP. If at all possible, this duty should be left to overseer-level personnel. No one is to be allowed to view, on video or through a window, or be in the same room as SCP-597 for longer than five hours. Maintenance personnel are to alternate every day. Evaluations are to be given at the end of the shift, or whenever mental distress seems obvious. If psychological contamination is too great and poses a tangible danger, termination can be performed immediately by the on-site analyst. The mental health offices are soundproofed for this purpose. The doctor can terminate up to 10 individuals at a time. Any more requires the approval of an overseer. In this scenario, Procedure 59732, weaning the babies, is to be activated. Vents in the ceiling require regular maintenance for this purpose. Smoke detectors are not to be turned off for any reason. Candles and incense lit in 597's cell are to be taken as an indication of a dangerous obsession. The leaving and offering of food, as 597 does not require it, is to be viewed in the same light as well. All other signs of unnatural love and religious awe are to be reported along with these. The room and the surrounding area are to be sealed with ventilation shafts, plumbing, and wiring checked daily. Measures are to be put into place for the continuous extermination of all vermin in the facility. Animals not part of the study found suckling on SCP-597 are to be removed and terminated as soon as possible due to risk of biological contamination. Because of this, in the morning, workers must wear hazmat suits while entering the cell, for SCP-597 is often covered in vermin, including mice, opossums, squirrels, and bats. 597 is to be hosed down weekly, with special care given to the areas around the nipples to prevent the buildup of saliva and drool. Those suckling need washing daily, as does the floor underneath them, for the removal of the puddles of urine, feces, for the first few days. But when solids completely leave the body, this is no longer necessary, although occasionally a thin watery substance is excreted, and vomit, which is produced when they drink too eagerly, quickly, or out of rhythm. The cleaning products are to be plain and unscented. Use of aromatics or herbal oils will be noted and no scrubbing is to be done by hand. Description SCP-597 is a blob of flesh, approximately 5.8 meters, 
or 19 feet high and 10.67 meters or 35 feet wide although this measurement changes slightly when it moves or the substances expand and ripple all over its body mostly located on its rolls are hundreds and hundreds of teats of various colors and sizes whenever a mammal is released into its cell it will be drawn to the corresponding teat for its species and then proceed to suckle as long as they are unimpeded the milk released will be identical in every way to the makeup of the subject's mothers although able to sustain the subject's nutritional needs indefinitely while the fluid is the same as normal milk chemically for some reason whether it be an effect of the SCP or an unknown quality of the substances it excretes, any full-grown mammal that would normally require more can survive to the end of their normal lifespan, give or take a few years, simply by suckling at the nipple. Although their teeth will fall out, their muscle will atrophy due to lack of use. The subjects will curl up as close as possible on the side, lay under the SCP. There have been reports of suffocation, or immerse themselves and dive into the flesh itself and stomach problems are presented because of the all-liquid diet. Milk taken in a bottle does not have the same results. Although those already affected by SCP-597 will fall under a quasi-hypnotic hold when presented with a container, will do anything to possess it, and find drinking it very gratifying. Those in charge of bottling the liquid have the urge to use a rubber teat for feeding babies as a cover, even when a normal lid will suffice and will attempt to do so even when informed that it is in violation of dangerous materials protocol, not being an airtight seal. The urge to suckle is a mental, physical, and sexual compulsion. While lower life forms cannot resist its effects at all, humans can, although they experience great difficulty. Those in SCP-597's presence describe it as a mental pull, leading us to the conclusion that it is partially telepathic although it is also obviously appeals to deep instincts, and is hormonal as well. Endorphins associated with breastfeeding and maternal comfort are released. Those who do give in do so in a mad rush, all restraint broken at once, or a slow ritual, commonly involving bowing, kneeling, crawling, and chanting. They are reduced quickly to an infantile state, and within one hour, lose all linguistic abilities intellectual capabilities, and willpower. Before complete loss of brain function, it is said to be highly comforting and pleasurable, and they say they feel safe, quote, like never before, end quote. Before and after contact is made, there are reports of strong feelings associated with vague images and recollections and sensations, all traced back to the womb or crib often centered around remembrance of their parents' smell and facial appearance. Data expunged. Retarded blind data expunged. Permanently attached. Data expunged. Data expunged. Those who watch are also influenced, although in lesser or different ways. Increased pettiness. Regression to childish states. Extreme immaturity decreased bowel control, fetishization, promiscuity, and even reports of public masturbation have all been noted. Staff's IQ, focus, and rationality all drop significantly over a period of time with SCP-597, and they often will fight with each other over silly things, such as objects or perceived insults, be racked with laughing and crying fits, be unable to resolve problems in an adult way, and lose the ability to control their emotions. After four to five weeks, it is impossible for them to function in a work setting, and they all communicate with each other with a series of grunts, coos, and short, confused sentences. Attention should also be paid to the fact that the employee's name for the object degenerates from the official title, SCP-597 to The Mother then to just mother, then mom, mommy, mum, and so forth, often ending in sucking, blowing, or kissing sounds as the representation. Also of interest is that almost immediately strong oral fixations will develop or resurface. 
Those who quit smoking will start again. 100% occurrence. And the chewing of gum, snacking, gluttony, nail and lip biting, and hair chewing rises as well, almost to the point of psychosis. There are deadly weight gains, choking incidents, balls are clumps of human material obstructing the digestive system, murders over food, the vending machine is often completely empty, and dental and health problems. Doctors and personnel in the area of effect, even those entering for a few moments, will find themselves absentmindedly putting something in their mouth without realizing it. Observation of the employees in their homes or private lives also reveals data expunged, often to the point of only being aroused by data expunged. Men with already unstable or fragile egos find a strengthening in oedipal complexes, often to dangerous levels. Three employees have raped and murdered data expunged. These same personality types also enjoy data expunged and request access to SCP-597 for that purpose. Unfortunately, although this behavior is not encouraged, those with this disease are many, too many to take a moral or ideological stance and completely restrict the activity without losing the needed number of workers. A good number are also high-level personnel, although revelation of their identity is forbidden and requires clearing the area and disabling the camera feeds so they can perform the act, which is not allowed to go over an hour, or separation will cause seizures and homicidal tantrums. Specific procedures for sexual visits can be found in Document 597-XD-12. Addendum 1 Document 597-XX-23 Found currently at 597's base and sides are 61 specimens suckling. They are 4 dogs at its bottom area, laying out in front of it like a litter. 6 cats. 27 rats hanging off its front. The wild vermin swarms that often hoard around it are especially problematic. But these are all lab bred, except for SCP-597 SS-19 and SCP-597-SS-24, which refuse to be removed, and are clamped too tightly on just to pull off. Fifteen bats that cover approximately all of its back, their wings flapping spasmodically, creating a slight gust. Eight humans, four D-class personnel, three doctors, one guard. Addendum 2 Document 597-XD-12 Data expunged. Data expunged. Data expunged. Care must be taken not to allow them to attempt to rip or tear a hole in 597 for penetration purposes. Data expunged. Addendum 3 Document 597-XX-25 an all-female task force has been shown not to be more effective in containment, as demonstrated by three events. The development of bisexual tendencies in Data Expunged, the loss of five female guards who after writing Mommy, Mommy, How I Love My Mommy all over the walls of the cell were lost and began suckling, and the suicide of Dr. Vanison who after circling each and every teat in red sharpie marker and writing life next to them, shot herself in the head. Addendum 4 Document 597-XYC-13 Data expunged. Data expunged. Inside the temple, the SCP was found, surrounded by scaffolding and staircases, with ladders propped up against the meat to allow as many people as possible to partake in the event. Data expunged. Lesson complete. To continue with your orientation training, subscribe to SCP Orientation right now and make sure you don't miss any of our upcoming videos.